Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and today I am so honored to announce that I have with me Tyler Main. Uh, you may know him as Michael Myers from Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2, as well as Sabretooth from X-Men. And one of my personal favorites, he whooped Joe Dirt's ass in the first Joe Dirt. Uh, Tyler, yeah. how you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no problem. All mine. Uh, so how you holding up in quarantine, man? How's everything going for you? You know, everything's good as you get a little bit uh, stir crazy and, and want to get out of the house. But uh, hey, we got to do what we got to do to stay safe and, and make it through this time, you know. And uh, uh, just uh, want to help tell everybody wear your mask when you go out, it's uh, going to save lives. Yeah. My, uh, I've said this before on the show, so I don't know if you know or not, but my wife is a respiratory therapist. So I appreciate you putting that out there. It means a lot to us, you know, trying to keep the safety because the people that aren't wearing masks that end up getting sick are risking infecting all these people in the hospital, including my wife. So please take that seriously, guys. It's not that hard to wear a cloth mask when you go out in public. So thank you for continuing your safety as well and doing your part in that. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's important. It's like, you know, it's going to be the new norm. You know, you got to wear a shirt and shoes in a store. Wear, wear, wear a damn mask. It's a cloth yeah. mask. It, 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 you know. <laughs> and I completely agree with you. Something that me and a buddy of mine brought up. I don't want to get too political. But Japan has the highest survival rate or the highest life expectancy in all the world. And they've been wearing masks forever. Yeah. For so, I mean, all of, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was over there wrestling in the 80s and, and 90s, they were wearing masks. So, yeah. you know, they, they wore it back then to deal with the pollution and things like that. But it, it helps. And, but they're used to doing it on a regular right. basis. Yeah. And that's so again, I want to thank you so much for bringing that up. That's something that really truly means a lot to me. Like I said, my wife, super important to me, obviously. So the safety of that is very important to all of us. We can at least try to get back to a norm again, at, at least in some little type of way. Um, so like I said, I know things are crazy right now with COVID, but can you tell us about any projects you got coming up here in the future? Or Yeah, I, through my production company, they, this uh, the quarantine is, has, I guess, kind of worked out. You know, we've got uh, <laughs> people are looking for projects. We, uh, Main Entertainment, we uh, dropped our second uh, feature, which is Penance Lane, on August, I think it was August 21st. No, it was April 21st. Sorry about that. April 21st oh, okay. uh, was the first one. And um, then now we are re-releasing Compound Fracture, which is our first film that we did in 2014. But uh, why we are re-releasing it now is it was tied up in the big alchemy bankruptcy. We had su our, sub -dis our dis distributor sub-distributed through alchemy, and okay. it was tied up in that whole bankruptcy for like five years. We finally got the rights back. It's still going through the bankruptcy court, but at least this way we can re-release it so that it gets its, you know, and proper viewing and uh that's compound fracture that's coming out august 11th on uh all the platforms so please check it out and uh, support indie film yes i will have um a link to that down here in the description as well so that way you guys can check that out like you said right now things are crazy these guys need all the support that they can get just like we need all the support we can get so they're providing us this entertainment while we're here stuck at home so help support them as well so Anytime you have any updates on anything, please let me know. I'll be happy to share it with everybody. Try to get main entertainment um, and the production company you're doing. I'm so happy for you, man. That's so cool. You're continuing to grow, and that's really, really cool, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and we're right now working on a TV series that we're hoping we can go into production before the end of the year. Uh, it's called The Last Spartan. Okay. So it's, uh, it's kind of like The Punisher meets Sons of Anarchy meets Human Trafficking. If you put all those three shows together, that's what it's dealing with. So we're working on that one right now, too. Also, uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be involved in a Netflix TV series called Jupiter's Legacy, written by Mark Miller, which is a comic book adaptation that okay. we did for the uh, Netflix uh, network. And uh, that should be coming out later on this year or the beginning of next year. So oh, that's I'm very awesome. excited about that too. So hopefully 
keeping the fingers crossed and everything goes in the right direction, you know? Yeah, that's got to flatten the curve so we can get you guys back out there working full time. And yeah, I know that sounds selfish to me. I want to watch you do movies, so we need to flatten the curve. But I just I'm excited to watch what you guys are doing. You've always I've always been a huge fan of yours. Um, Thank you. Well, I've always talked about how I think um, the Michael Myers and the Rob Zombies Halloweens was easily had the best kills. He was the most violent. He was the most scary. And then talking to you, you're the nicest guy in the world. So it shows how you can get into that method and get into that character. And you were absolutely brutal in those movies, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's opening up my flavored water here. So. <laughs> oh, you're all good, brother. Um, but let's get into it, man. Let's talk about what got you started in the horror genre. Your first horror movie, which was? Uh, the first one that I saw, the first movie I saw, a horror movie was Jaws. I think I was like 10 years old. I saw it in the theater. And I mean, it scared the shit out of me. I didn't even want to go in the bathtub after that, mm -hmm. you know? Dude, and and uh, <laughs> going into large bodies of water, like going to the lake. I mean, I knew that, you know, fresh water, you're not going to have jaws in it. But who who knows what else was down there, you know? Mm -hmm. so I'm jaws, still with you. I don't swim. I, and that's I my go-to. That's my go-to movie now. I mean, I can watch that again and again and again. And it's just, I mean, I, I love Jaws, the first one first one so while we're on that subject i was going to ask you later but you just said the first one are there any of the sequels that you're a fan of or is it really just like a one and done the first one and you're out you know i've watched them all uh and i enjoy them but it's just you, you go back to that first one where they're on the boat and mm -hmm. and he has that speech you know i, I mean you, you just can't beat it right see and i'm with you i i do like the, i actually i think Jaws the Revenge, the last one, even though it's kind of silly, he follows him down to the Caribbean or whatever, but it's an entertaining movie. It's, it's one that I can watch. But you're right, nothing beats the original Jaws. And something I've talked about on the channel, people might actually be tired of hearing me talk about it. Jaws is so influential. And even people that have never seen the movie know the score. You know, you know the da da and they know no. that it's from Jaws. So that's how no. influential that movie is. And all the creature movies that have spawned because of Jaws is amazing. Um, and, the well, way it, and, and the way it turned out is, you know, I mean, the, the mechanical shark wasn't working properly. Mm -hmm. So you would see less of the shark. And I think less is more in, in, in films like that. And that's something I was going to bring up too. You know, Bruce, which what they named the shark, it would not cooperate at all. Right. And it actually worked out because when you actually do see it, it heightens that anxiety and it gives you that more, you're more fearful when you see it because you've been hearing about it. You've been seeing it's fin, you know what it's all about. Then you finally see it. It's just, Oh no. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, out. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this, which scene in the original jaws affected you the most and why? Um, you know, I'm, I, it's going to sound silly, but, but they're, when they're drinking, in the boat and you hear his speech and then boom the side of the boat's hit and then it's hit again and then that right there that scene to me was like the most terrifying because he just explained what happened to him in the past yeah and you're like it's gonna happen again now and it was just that just that that scene moved me and when they were filming that, those guys were really drinking. That dude looked drunk on a lot of those shots. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I just think that's amazing. Like, you go back and watch. And this to me, this is one of those movies that I, I feel is the perfect movie. Um, I'm with you. It's one of the ones I watched at a young age, and it scared the hell out of me. And But you watch it now even, and this movie holds up so well. It's one of the movies that... I could put on any time, any day, and I'll be super happy to watch it just like I was the first time. And I can't oh, tell you how many times, just out of nowhere, as a kid, I'm like, huh, you're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, one of those improvised lines that, that just landed so well. Yeah, that just affects you like crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. I so love when you think about Jaws, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Uh, man, that shark. That shark, that killing machine, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it was just a, amazing, you know? And, and that's, I kind of equate my Michael Myers to like a land shark in, 
in some sort of a way because it's like Michael Myers also is that killing machine that's, you know, I mean, there's no reasoning. It's, it's on. So, yeah. And that, and like I said, you're Michael too. Like, it's just a bad dude, man. Like, but one thing I do like, I did like about your Michael was when he killed the security guards that were, you know, sexually assaulting that girl. Yeah. That's one time I, I rooted for Mike. I was like, get him, man. Kill those guys. <laughs> like, yeah. That, you you know, know, I like how I'm an evil killing machine, but even I know that's not cool. That's wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Cause I, I think the first test screening that, uh, that Rob did, the fans were sympathetic because of that to Michael. So we had to go back in and, and kill Danny Trejo. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> you still had to show I'm still, I'm still evil. Yeah. Still, you know, still the bad guy. <laughs> we, we love you, Danny, but now we're going to uh, drop a TV on your head. Exactly. <laughs> shit, shit happens. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so with Jaws, um, what was your favorite? I hate saying favorite because that's such a weird way of putting it. But what death or you know kill in that movie do you think stuck with you the most? Oh, uh, his name is it's Hooper, right? Or like when when he's sliding down, you know, you see that look of terror in his eyes, and it's like. And, and he would never wear a, a life jacket, you know, because of that. And that was his biggest fear. I think that was probably that one. And then, and then uh, uh, the guy getting in the, the shark tank. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I mean. Even at a young age. Yeah. You're like, come on, man. Don't go into the water. That's, <laughs> you know, it's, no. It's kind of like walking into a bear's den and saying, hey, I'm here, you know? Yeah, w wearing a stake around your neck. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you might as well just put chum all over you and jump in. <laughs> um, so I talked a little bit about Jaws, but I always like to go scream on you guys. What is your favorite horror movie? Jaws. Oh, it's your favorite as well. Yeah, Jaws. Yeah. Jaws and uh, Shining. Okay. Shining. Those, those are my two go-tos. Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of people that I talk to actually that their favorite horror movie is their first horror movie. And just like me house from 1986. That yep. is, that's my favorite horror movie. It was the first one I remember watching. And um, I think a lot of that is you get that fear for the first time from a movie. You know, you go from watching Bambi to watching Jaws and you have that fear and that anxiety and no movie ever gets you again the way that first one did, you know, Right. realizing there's movies out there like this and especially as a kid i didn't realize that movies were fake until i saw lou diamond phillip in another movie and i was like hey that guy died in la bamba that's richie balance and my aunt was like no it's stupid. <laughs> They're movies. they don't really die you know yeah so right. you see these movies and you're just you're just like wow this is incredible and jaws is another one of those that it affected so many people i liken the effect that jaws had on people not as dramatic but just like the exorcist had on people i mean the exorcist had people leaving the theater crying, screaming, puking. Yeah. Jaws had people that were still to this day fearful of what bodies of water. You know, that that impact that Jaws had. It's not like a Freddy Krueger or a Gremlins. This is a real thing. That It's very, very realistic. This can happen to any of us at any time if we're in the water. So that's yeah, exactly. uh, I, Jaws, you can never go wrong with that because I like with, with a horror movie. That's why I was always a fan of the Halloween series. I've talked about that. There's a realistic aspect to the Halloween series. It's not a kid that drowned and came back. It's not a guy that's getting right. you in your dreams. It's just an evil, evil monster man that's just out there killing people. Yeah, well, so, and, you know, in our Halloween, he's a product of his environment. I mean, he just came mm -hmm. from that shitty childhood, you know, and it's, uh, it, it just shows you that th that could be happening next door, too, you know? You, you yeah. Never know. You know? Yeah, you don't you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. No, and no. one scene I've talked about from the Michael My from the, your guys' Halloween is when little Michael kills the bully in the woods. Yeah, you know you don't get that a lot seeing ki kids beating other kids to death like that. Just right. and that to me is something I talked about. Like he was he's not like I became evil over time because blah 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 blah. I'm inherently evil because of my upbringing as a child and the things that I've seen around me. I'm just an inherently evil, even as a kid. Yeah. You well, that, that, pulling that the cats out of his backpack. And yeah, that kid in the woods got all the pent up aggression. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, it's, yeah I'll, I'll uh, teach you to show pictures of my stripper mom at school. Right. 
<laughs> Fine, get yeah, them across that line, you know? Shit. Right. <laughs> and it, it was amazing to see you doing a role like that because you're a big dude, man. And like I said, uh, watching you kill those guys, and then I always liken that back to watching you beat the hell out of Joe Dirt. Yeah. You got to watch your celebrations, though, brother. Huh? I said, you got to watch your celebrations. You can't get right next to the. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm probably the only person that's uh, pissed on a fire and caught fire. I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome man um now i always do this at the end of every episode i give a skull rating we're rating jaws zero being the worst five being the best i'm pretty sure i know where this is going but how many skulls are you rating jaws zero to five? Oh, five. five, Hands out down, of five. easily yeah and you and gotta and I you gotta have people uh check you. out compound fracture. fracture and penance lane films through main entertainment and then do the skull rating for them too I would love to. I'll, yeah. I'll review those movies. Like, I, do, I do horror movie reviews on this channel as well. Oh, so I would there we go. Really yeah. happy to do that. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. And you've been involved in something else. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the score in these films, you've been involved in what I think is two of the three best scores of all time. Halloween, which, you know, that's everybody knows the Halloween lick that has not, you know, and then Jaws and then the Imperial March from Star Wars. You know, those are three of the most well-known scores of all time that people know even without seeing the movies. And, you know, you're talking about Jaws being one of your first and favorite horror movie. We've watched you in Rob Zombie's Halloween. And, you know, you're iconic to me, man. This is so cool. This is such a dream come true to be able to talk to you about this stuff. And I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come out here and hang out with me, man. Yeah, hey, my, my pleasure has been fun. It's so, been fun. Everybody hey, else, um, yeah, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, thank you so much for watching. I have Tyler here. Like I said, check out the description. I got a lot of links for some of his stuff. Keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.